So it's a beautiful morning and I am in downtown uh, or in the museum district of Oslo in Norway here headed to the museum because I want to show you uh, some of the monk paintings real quick before I show you the grave but look at this as you walk along well first of all here's the uh, cruise ships and all hotels and everything but these right here are saunas and you can see people kind of getting getting in there wood burning saunas it's pretty awesome there's a whole bunch of them they're floating I don't think I've ever experienced uh, a building like this before. This entire thing is a slant. That's so strange. All right, so I'm going to take you into the museum and show you the screen painting and some other ones that are uh, in there of uh, monks because he lived here. And this is where he died. This is where he's buried, Oslo, Norway. So here we are inside the famed monk museum uh, it's multiple floors i think it's like six seven or eight different levels all different art a lot of monks paintings here so most people know edvard monk from his screen painting and that's here there's actually a few different versions of it here so edvard lived from 1863 to 1944 and he was active with his art for over 60 years, roughly uh, 1880s until his death. He was a pioneer in the expressionist art movement in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, I mean, there's a ton of stuff, so I'm not going to show everything, but I'll show some of the more interesting or notable paintings that I find here at least. And then I'm definitely going to show you the different versions of the screen that they have here and the interesting setup, how they do it here. But um, Edward had a pretty tragic life right from the beginning. Uh, his mother died when he was five years old of tuberculosis, which actually haunted him his whole life. He was always afraid of getting tuberculosis. And um, even though he never did, he actually ironically did die from pneumonia, which is fair to say that it's similar. And then about nine years later, his father died, uh, which left him and his siblings alone to fend for themselves. So very tragic situations happening at an early age. And that hardship significantly influenced his art uh, later on in his life, his emotional art. He explored different emotions like love and, and anxiety death and human existence so it's obvious that that hardship significantly influenced his art plus his constant struggle with mental health in life and monk's works were characterized by by his use of vivid colors and bold brushwork and his focus on expression now i don't claim to know much about art history or anything like that but i believe he was either the first or one of the first to really explore psychological and emotional states his human psyche connected with with his art and that style or or that creativity paved the way for the development of modern art in psychology So this is the uh, the room, you could call it, with, with this Scream artwork in it. There are three versions. There's one painting, tempera, with oil on cardboard. There's one drawing on, with crayon on cardboard. And then there's one black and white lithograph. Those three are on display at any given time here. You can never see them all at the same time. They have these doors that periodically open and close, exposing the different versions of the screen. You know, this artwork, this is very fragile due to how Edvard made them. So the temperature, the humidity, the oxygen levels, uh, light exposure, they all need to be controlled in order to preserve this artwork. Plus, from a security standpoint, uh, some version of these paintings has been stolen out of this museum twice, one in 1994 and once in 
2004. And in 2004 one, armed gunmen came in and stole the paintings right off of the wall here. Middle of the day. And then they actually took one of, uh, a Madonna too, one of his art pieces called the Madonna. Now both cases, the artwork was returned pretty much undamaged and the people were convicted but uh, that, I think obviously that changed how they do things now. So from a security standpoint, they can close these doors very quickly and uh, it protects the paintings. So yeah, they're on a rotation basically. It was created during a period of his life, 1893, I, th uh, I think he was 30 years old, where he was going through a lot of mental health issues and um, you can see it in the painting, the bold color, the swirling lines, and a tormented figure capturing that anguish and anxiety. So not far away from the museum at all is the uh, Our Savior Cemetery. And this is where Edvard Munk is buried. On January 23rd, 1944, Monk died at his home of pneumonia. As I said before, he was always in fear of tuberculosis ever since his mother's death. But he never got tuberculosis. Uh, but unfortunately, he did die of pneumonia. He had just turned 80 years old. And this was during World War II. The Germans had invaded and at that point occupied Norway and uh, he was in constant fear of the Nazis taking his artwork which in fact they did but I believe it was all returned in one way or another but for a time or maybe people still to this day some people believe that he was a Nazi sympathizer because the Nazis orchestrated his funeral. However, I think that whole fact that he was living in that fear of them taking away his paintings, I think it was kind of like, you know, you befriend your enemies in a sense. You know, you're afraid of someone, so you're kind of nice to them, or you're, you know, you kind of get along with them because of fears of what they could do. Um, but that's my, ignorant opinion about that. I don't know much about any of that, but that has, you know, the fact that he was a Nazi sympathizer has been rigorously defended. But this is where he's buried right here. This is a bust of himself. So if you didn't know about Edward Monk, now you do. He was a visionary, an artist who used his personal experience and emotion to create some of the most iconic and emotionally charged works of art in history. And he continues to inspire and will always inspire people all over the world, future artists, experienced artists, even regular people like myself. That's kind of the quick version of his story and what little bit I do know of him. I guess this is part of the... Oh, it's not. Somebody left that there. I thought it was part of the grave. That's kind of cool. It's a metal rose. And you know, for my whole life, I thought that his name was Edward Munch. But it is in fact Monk. Edvard Monk. So rest in peace, Mr. Monk. See you in the next video.